Hi sewing friends, welcome to my sewing room. My name is Beth. It's nice to be with you today and if you're new, welcome. Today we're going to make a really pretty table runner, so let's get started. For my table runner today, I'm using some fat quarters, some pretty greens, turquoise, yellows, and I'm using two and a half inch red squares and some cream background. So I took my fat quarters and got them pressed because these fat quarters had some creases. I love this green right here, it's so pretty. And after getting my fat quarters pressed, I started by stacking three together and cutting strips, two and a half inch strips. Now the block that I'm making today, the pinwheel block is pretty big, it's 16 and a half inches. And that block is actually four different blocks put together. So I kind of focused on just the smaller piece. <laughs> so I'm making four blocks to make a big block. So for each of my four little blocks, I need a two and a half inch square of my color, a two and a half by four and a half, a two and a half by six and a half, and a two and a half by eight and a half. So I made a stack, and all that will be down below in the description. I made a stack of a variety of strips, and there is my eight and a half. Then for the background, and I'm cutting a couple more right here, I'll put those aside for my next one. For the background, I'm using two and a half inch square uh, strips as well. I need uh, two and a half inch squares. I need one for each of my four little blocks. I need two and a half by four and a half and two and a half by six and a half. So I'm going to set those out sort of in order so I can keep track as I go along. And for the pinwheel, I need those two and a half inch squares of red. And of course, whatever color you decide, um, I think the pinwheel kind of needs to pop. And of course, red always pops. And the pinwheel will look kind of like that. I made myself a diagram so that I could follow it along as I went, so I wouldn't get mixed up. That half square triangle needs to go a certain way, otherwise you will not have a pinwheel. So that diagram helped me follow along. So on this one, I made my pinwheel piece first, my half square triangle uh, first. And in the uh, blocks to follow, I did not do it first. I kind of did it as I went along. So starting in the left bottom, I'm putting this together kind of like a half log cabin. So you start with the smaller pieces and then just work your way out. Uh, so a dark, so a light, so a dark, and so a light, and you will have your block. I tried to get my seams to go towards the darker fabric, but it didn't always happen. And I tried to use a variety of colors. I didn't want blue next to blue, so that this would look pretty scrappy. But I didn't use a huge variety of colors. I, like I said, I think I only used six different fabrics for the, um, the colored strips. And now we're almost done with a quarter of that big pinwheel block. So I need to make four of these and then I'll put the four little blocks together and we'll have our pinwheel. So I needed to cut some more strips. I just cut them as I went along, as I needed them. And I made a nice little stack next to me so I could just go through and choose colors as I went along. So I'm gonna keep sewing and get my four blocks together so that I can get my big pinwheel block made.
So here is where I forgot to add the half square triangle and there was an oops moment. So what I did is I ripped out just that bottom part of the background fabric, that white fabric, and I added in my half square triangle and then I was good to go. Well, I think these colors are just beautiful and I'm really happy with the way this is turning out. For my table runner, I am going to need three of these big pinwheel quilt blocks. And you'll see I'm going to put the three together. And in this video, I will be quilting, binding, the whole shebang. So if you want to stick around and watch, I'll be putting it together. I have other videos that show you how to quilt a small quilt, how to bind a small quilt. So I won't walk you through all that, but you can stick around while I make this really cute table runner.
When it came to quilting time, I decided to follow the design of the quilt and I am just going diagonally through the pinwheels and I can pretty much follow the quilt itself. I'm aiming for that point right there and then the corner of the block. So I'll, on the next one, I think I kind of point at it as I go through. I'm going to shoot for that seam right there, go through the pinwheel, and then I shoot for the corner of that seam right there and f to the corner of the quilt, and I was able to eyeball the quilting lines so I didn't have to mark anything, which is really handy, saves a step if you can do that. And then I added some more diagonal lines just using the seams the corners as my guide. I did some straight lines through the center of the blocks, but then I went back and did some diagonal lines. Then I trimmed following the uh, table runner, the little quilt itself. Just trimmed the batting and the backing. And after that, I decided on a sort of a cream binding. I didn't want to have yeah, any of those colors. I just wanted it to be really soft. So two inch binding, I because I wasn't going to double it, I cut four strips of binding and I added that to the front. And I, like I said, I have a video about how to add binding to a quilt and how to add binding to a small quilt. I think there's a couple videos. I'll try to add the links down below. And then after adding the binding to the front of my quilt, I rolled that binding to the back and then did some hand stitching all the way around. I think this quilt turned out beautifully. Uh, this table runner, it's just so bright and cheery. Thank you for sewing with me today and I will see you next time.